What's good, everybody? It is I, Mel, your main girl, also known as Mains by Mel. Hence the scissors, I am a hairstylist. So today I'm gonna to be creating a Mains by Mel on my own head by giving myself a trim because I'm long overdue. We can see here, when I'm wearing black, it really shows how bad my ends have gotten. So as I'm trimming, I'll be explaining to you guys why I'm doing what I'm doing, what a trim, a trim, just a trim, really is, when you need to get it done, and even how to actually do it, depending on the look you're going for, then keep watching this video, and let's get to it. So first off, what is a trim? Let's clear this up really quickly, okay? A trim, trim, trimmy trim, is best described as maintenance for the current hair that you have on your head. So whether you are maintaining a certain shape that you have, or you're maintaining the health of your hair to maintain the length of it, it is simply a cleanup of ends that have thinned out, kind of split, broken off, and are looking kind of straggly as we can very clearly see here. Now maybe let's define what maintenance is. Maintenance means to maintain. It is a process, again, to maintain a current shape that you have or to maintain your length. This comes through routine and through regularity. However, a trim is not the only way to maintain healthy hair. There are a number of ways to preserve your hair's health, low manipulation styles, little chemical processing, low heat, and using the right products like deep conditioning and repairing treatments, especially the right cleansers and conditioners for your hair type, etc, etc. You may be doing all of these things, but you still need to get a trim. Okay. So, when do you need to trim your hair? You need to consider the following. One, what is your current hair situation? Is your hair transitioning? Is it colored? Highlighted? Damaged? Heat styled often? Protective styled? Etc. Etc. Typically, okay, the more you do to your hair, the more you need to maintain it. More manipulation to your hair causes more stress on your strands and therefore it causes them to wear and tear and causes your ends to look like this. They are dry, they are tangly, they are splitting, you got the fairy knots. So if some or all of these things are happening to you, you gotta trim it. So number three, what is your texture? You need to consider this because thin and fine hair is typically weaker and is more prone to damage. Therefore, it needs to be trimmed more frequently compared to thick strands that are coarser and typically stronger. They can take a little more without getting so damaged. The next thing you want to consider is what your hair goal is. Are you growing your hair or are you maintaining a length and a shape? This part helps to give you a better idea of how long to wait in between your trims. If you are growing your hair, you want to give your hair enough time in between your haircuts to actually achieve some length, but before the ends start to split and then you have to cut them all off. This can be anywhere from two months all the way to six months depending on your texture and how much you are doing to your hairs. For example, for the past few years, I've been highlighting my hair every six to eight weeks, and I would trim my hair every six to eight weeks to maintain my ends, but I was also maintaining a shape that I had. Now that I'm growing my hair, it's been four months since I have trimmed it, I also have not highlighted it in that time, and I have now acquired quite a bit of length. Now if you're maintaining a shape, and typically when the hair is shorter, you need to get your hair cut more often. Otherwise, it just looks really grown out. Okay. Now the real difficult question. Who should trim your hair? You can most definitely, in fact, it's encouraged, to see a professional. And I do have another video on some signs to look out for on how to find your curly hair stylist. However, in this video, I'm showing you how I trim my own hair. Because there are some people that would prefer to maintain their hair themselves for multiple reasons. So now we need to get into how to cut. This is where there's some controversy. So allow me to go and prepare myself. Okay, limber up and boom! Back and I'm better, back and I'm wetter. Here's my piece. You can cut hair in whatever state, as long as you understand the hair texture, what it's going to do, 
and the shape you're trying to create. So to start, I shampooed, conditioned, and actually treated my hair as well. I am going to first get myself ready. Don't want any hair going on my clothes. I'm going to part my hair where I usually part it. Now I don't necessarily put in a defined part ever, but it is usually parted off to the sides. Off center there, looks good. I want there to be a lot of balance in my haircuts. I want even shape all throughout. So I do want to create symmetry from my part and in the haircut itself. So I'm just brushing this through, of course. And the first thing I'm going to be doing is trimming the layers. Um, I want to shape the layers first and then just trim up the ends because I'm hoping to cut a little bit more off the layers and a little less off of the ends because I do want to maintain that length. However, the ends do need to be trimmed. When you look at them here, you can see that it gets pretty thin at the bottom. And this is going to be easy for me, not only because I'm, I understand what I'm doing, but because I already like the shape that my hair is, I just need to take it up about an inch or so. But I'm following what's already in my hair. So if you do like the haircut that you have, it just needs a trim, simply follow what's already been cut. So I'm going to start, I'm going to take a section, and it's a diagonal section. And the reason for cutting my hair wet is because I want a really clean shape put into my hair. Now let's get real real. If you don't know what you're doing, it's not that you can't do this. I just encourage you to do very little at a time. So you can see me, even I am very cautious when I'm going in towards my hair. You need to see how the hair reacts for a minute. So maybe take the section, take a little bit off, let it bounce back, look at it again. What I'm really trying to create here is, in a, is a nice rounded shape that is going to be framing my face, which is why I'm pulling everything forward. So I'm gonna have shorter pieces around my face and then towards the back, it's gonna get a little bit longer, kind of create that rounded V cut as well. So I'm over directing is the word, pulling all the hair forward. I'm working in diagonal sections as well and one section at a time and simply trimming the hair as you see it. Now, if you've been watching me, you know me, I'm a 90 degree girl. I'm always working up, up and out, out from the natural fall of the head, about 90 degrees. This is how I cut my layers as well. I'm always following the head shape, working around. So the hairs that are at the top of my head are going to be shorter and then the hairs at the bottom of my head are going to be longer. I'm always working out pulling the hair all the way out, parallel to my head, and cutting around like that. That's how I create my layering, always 90 degree from the head, and again, pulling everything a little bit forward. That's also giving me a nice round shape that is shorter in the front and longer towards the back of my head. And I'm trying to just take off the same amount all over, which was just about an inch. An inch all over my hair, so all the ends get cleaned up. Sometimes the ends look a little more raggedy in some areas than others, and that's because the hair doesn't grow out of your head all at the same length while it grows. So you need to accommodate for that and just try to cut in the cleanest, sharpest lines as possible. As I'm moving towards the back, I'm purposely turning my head. I am very aware of where my head is turned. I will be doing this exactly on the other side as well to keep that balance. If you're unaware of where you're pulling your hair, where you're turning your head, your haircut is going to be very jagged and all over the place only because every move matters. So if your head is different every time, then you're going to have a very, um, let's call it a, hmm, how do you say, morphed, morphed, um, how do you say, you're going to have a more lived in haircut which could be okay if that's the look you're going for. Again, I want it to be nice and clean and sharp and fresh all over. So I'm working the same sections all over. You have to keep your fingers really nice and tight when you're grabbing the hair. Only work with about an inch section in your hand at a time. Otherwise, you're gonna get lost. It's gonna get crazy. You'll be overwhelmed and suddenly you're crying because you messed up your haircut. So. One little section at a time, one little trim at a time. Remember, you can always take off more, but you can't put that hair back on your head. 
And you can see when I'm trimming around my face, I'm really going that short to long. So I'm shorter uh, towards the middle, towards the bangs. And then as it goes around my face, I want it to go longer. This area of my face it has very different curl patterns. So I know that I will be going in after with the dry cut to refine. So keep watching because that will be the most important part. To be honest, this is just to get a nice solid even trim, making sure that no curl gets left behind. But after is where I'm going to detail the curls. Very nice, very nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and style my hair as I always do. And I'm gonna use products I've been using for a while now, which is the Verb Curl Collection. Starting off with the curl leave-in. This stuff is like milky. It's super nice and liquidy, so it's very easy to work in the hair. Prep my hair all over with that. And now I'm going in with the curl cream, which you can see is a thicker consistency. I definitely need it in these porous times of mine. And I'm just making sure I'm working that in my damp hair. Then, of course, thoroughly distributing that with my Denman brush, working in these vertical sections out, up, up, and away from the head, which is going to give me the most amount of volume and curl definition. And oh, hello, Seaster. Happy Texture Tuesday. Making my way around, up and down. Top of my head is horizontal. -na 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 -na. Working like this is fun. Boom. So now I shall diffuse my hair dry using my hover technique, which if you have not yet seen a video on, then you need to watch my diffusing video, which may change your life. But so now that my hair has all dried, um, it's styled how I always wear it, this is when I would go in and do my dry cutting. And I have to do this because I do have slightly different textures, but it is a pretty consistent curl pattern. I really just want to make sure that there's no thin or straggly ends or Anything sticking out weird, so I'm going section by section. I tilt my head. I like to see this action because it's layered. I kind of get this stacking that I love. Most importantly, I want to frame around my face. Around my face, especially in here, I've got these looser textures, and I just want to make sure that I'm opening up all of this area. Probably my number one tip I can give you guys is not to get too scissor happy. It's very easy to get lost in the dry cut and continue cutting, but take a step back, give it a day or two, give it another wash, and then you can always reevaluate it. You can always cut more off after, but if you go a little too far from the start, then you're gonna have to wait that one out. So, there you have it. The hedge has been trimmed. I do usually tweak this over the next couple of washes, but I am thoroughly satisfied. My ends feel so much better. Yeah, my length has been retained. It jumped up a little bit more because it is super happy now, and that makes me happy. And I'm definitely gonna go take some selfies now with my fresh hair and show you guys this side by side because, wow, a little bit goes a long way. A little trim is better than no trim, and a haircut doesn't always have to be sacrificing your length, okay? Let's come back in a few months to see where I'm sitting then and see when my next trim will be, shall we? So make sure you're subscribed for more videos like this. Until next week, bye everybody. Let me spoon feed you some food for thought. Now how do I know if I cut, like how do I know how? Oh no. This is where there's some controversy and the reason what was the reason? The reason for wetting my hair. It smells very fresh. It's like a spa. Yeah. I'm starving. Kind of soothing. Mm.